Back. I can't. Yeah, we had the Canes in the podcast. I can't. We had the Canes in the podcast, y'all. We were talking about everything everybody else can talk about. Once again, joined by my beautiful Hey, how you doing, love? I am good. How you doing? Good. It's good to see you. Good to be back. Yes. Be back. And also today we are joined by another guest, Mina from the Pitch the Hunch Football Podcast. Woo woo. What's up, y'all? <laughs> What's up, Mina? Jeez. Hey, mind your motherfucking business. <laughs> Don't start your shit. I know you miss me, right? I did. I know. I miss y'all too, though, for real, for real. We miss you, girl. But also today, y'all, we have another special host. Um, I didn't say host. Yes, we have another special host. Um, Mr. Jay Hunter. I'm going to call her, but she calls herself the freak hostess. Love it. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> she's out of shot time, allegedly, because she's not got to move all that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to say her name is Joy, but I know she goes by Elias when she's outside because she wants to do what she wants to do. But I'm going to let her introduce herself to you guys. Joy, how you doing, baby? Hey, y'all. It's Jody. The free coach is like you said. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Hennessy. It's the Hennessy. <laughs> What's Jody. up, y'all? How you doing? Hi, Jody. Doing? Hi, Jody. I am good. I am good. You look good, girl. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jody, provocative. Yeah. How, did, how did you come up with that name and that spelling? Okay, so long story short, during the pandemic, I was smoking a lot of weed. Mm. Like a whole <laughs> lot. So um, I want to say I made like some edibles because I started making edibles during the pandemic too. So I made me some edibles and I was doing the dishes. So like that was like my routine. I would get high and clean up. So I'm doing the dishes and I was already thinking about what I wanted to call my podcast, but I hadn't come up with a name. And I was like, out of nowhere, it was like provocative. Like you mm-hmm. as a person are very provocative. The name of the podcast is provocative. But I was like, but you're not going to spell it that way. You're going to spell it with a hoe in the middle because mm-hmm. you're going to take that word up a notch. So basically what I did was I took the word provocative and made it more Hold provocative. Up. Before you go, let me remind you to embrace your inner hope. Yes. <laughs> um, so it was kind of twofold, right? So on the one hand, the provocative became like a symbol of where I was in life because I just got out of a six year relationship and I had never been a hoe. Like I had never what? had a hoe phase. I had never like just kind of like unapologetically like experimented with different, you know, like with anything sexually, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to document what this looks like for me. So, that's cool. yeah, that's what it was. I thought you was going to say you was masturbating one day and just it just came to you. I didn't know you No, uh-uh, no. Uh. So <laughs> you, you, you just blew my whole load just now. Like, I was yeah, just that would have been some dope-ass sex magic, though, if the, the name just would have dropped, you know, mid-orgasm. That would have been lit. <laughs> Fact. So, Definitely. Was, was that during the time that you decided to become a sexologist, or was it after that? Uh, that was actually before. Oh. So I start. So as I, I was a podcaster first, and then I became a sexologist. So um, started podcasting, and I was always talking about sex. So I knew I wanted to talk about sex because every time I talk with my friends and we have conversations, they're always laughing at my storytelling when it comes to my sexual experiences. And I'm not trying to be funny. They're just <laughs> laughing. So I'm like, clearly I'm entertaining. So I have something there, right? Right. But then um, after doing it for a couple months, I knew that I didn't want to be just another podcaster talking about sex. I wanted the education. I wanted the credentials. I wanted the background. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to become a certified sexologist. Um, Went after that certification, studied, study, study. I still study all the time. Like if you catch me reading a book, it's probably about dick. I'm not going to hold you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um, I did the first certification and then I realized like, you know, what my bread and butter was, which is fellatio. So oh, yeah. that certification too. So now I teach the girls how to suck dick. <laughs> Jody, what's your sign? I'm Scorpio. Okay, I'm one of them what's your sign, girls. <laughs> is, it, is that a good dick sucking sign? What? That's a, that's uh, Scorpio is up there. Scorpio is up there. I had an ask because, you know, I feel like a, a fellatio queen myself and i'm a libra so i just had to check in to see if we was on that same wavelength but you know you're not too far we ain't too far so. <laughs> before we get started for the, the people listening can you explain exactly what a sexologist is because i had never heard of that i just thought it meant you was a freak 
Or obviously, I know there's a medical term or. <laughs> Oh. No, so um, me being a certified sexologist, I actually coach and teach people about how to explore sexuality. Sound so, like you did it. Huh? Sound like he did it. You watching? <laughs> you, know what? you know what? I have my thoughts on that. But, um, <laughs> but long story short, there are a lot of women that similar to me, like I talked about how I never really experimented when it came to sex. Right. So that is the breeding ground for a lot of sexual insecurities. There are a lot of women that say like, you know what? I don't know. I don't like, or I don't know how to ride dick. Guess what? Yes. I'm a sexologist. I can teach you how to do things that are, you know, that is going to work for your sexual lifestyle. So it may be about your comfortability. It may be about your uh, physical appearance. You might not like how you potentially look to your partner during right. like uh the faces you make right so it's like we go through all of those things to kind of build your confidence so that you can improve your sexual you know capabilities how, how often do you have men come to you and say they need help i, I can see women might be like i don't know how to ride i don't know how to suck it but do men come to you and be like i don't think my sex game good can you um me? i've had a couple men come to me but sometimes it's also like how do i best talk to my girl about telling her that I want her to try to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because here's the thing. Uh, we talk a lot about the uh, fragile egos of a man. Thanks. Women's ego, when it comes to sex, very fragile. Like, if a Ooh. guy even say, like, oh, well, you know, it was good, but I felt a little teeth, she gonna be like, I ain't never saw your dick again. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I try to tell people, like, I... I, I listen to both sides because I'm a pleasure advocate. I think both people should experience pleasure. There's no reason why mm -hmm. women are having conversations with other women talking about how they men not pleasing them. And it's men having conversations with other men saying like, look, she, she, she not doing it for me. Right. <laughs> so how do we have these conversations and not only a candid way, but in a way that, you know, improves the sexual experience for both of us, because we can't just come to it saying like, Oh, you should just already know how to fuck me. Nah, it's not that it's not that easy. It's crazy because remember, uh, I just went through that. Oh shit. I did. I just went through that shit. <laughs> You're fucking different because you strap on, so you can't and see shit. that wasn't even the case. You love to bring the strap on shit up. Like they <laughs> like, you my dog with the book bag. I, sure. I, but I don't always carry it. So you need stop. to. I always carry mine. <sighs> just for you, I'm gonna make sure I carry it <laughs> every day from <laughs> now on. So, As a matter of fact, you need to buy me a special crossbody. Fuck is that crossbody bag? The so crossbody, like oh, the uh, push, the man, yeah. push. I'm a female, so I don't. I, I, I could look at that. It was the cane disabled on it, too. That's why. Okay, um, let's go. So, Jody, here when we have a new guest, what we like to do is we like to ask our guests to give us a number between one and 30. 13. 13. You go for looks or personality, and because you're very sexual and you're uh kinky, answer in that in that form. Um. Looks are the first thing we see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see you before I, you even open your mouth. So, uh, on the one hand, I want to say, oh, I go for the personality. But I'm a shallow ass bitch, and I'm not even going to hold y'all. So, if you look crazy off the, like, if you look kind of off, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'm that mature to date someone based off their personality alone. Like, I went mm -hmm. out on a date with a guy who I didn't know he had a wandering eye because every time he took pictures, his ass was straight. Like <laughs> he, he has mastered the art of taking a really good picture. But right. when he came and opened up, like when I saw him in person and, and this ass started going over there, I'm like, <laughs> I don't think I'm mature enough for this. Mm -hmm. And so again, like that was one of those situations where it's like, it didn't even matter about his personality. That eye <laughs> was throwing me off. <laughs> Man, at least you wanted. I mean, but is, so the, is the eye person... I have not really personality though. But she's saying she couldn't get past the look. I couldn't yeah. get past that. Yeah. yeah. And also, I feel like when it comes to your physical appearance, that impacts your personality as well. Because that's going to determine how, like, the way you look, right, is going to be a reflection of how you feel. Uh -huh. How you feel is a confidence thing, right? So if you know everything not all the way together. Mm -hmm. It's a great chance your confidence is not all the way up there. I, don't know. And I, I definitely need somebody that's like super confident to mess with somebody like me. Like y'all see the shit I post. I know some. <laughs> I know some cocky, ugly bitches now. Hey, <laughs> I know some cocky, ugly bitches now. 
Uh huh. But it's it, their confidence is coming from somewhere. They probably got a fat ass. You know how to suck dick. Or that. That's what I'm saying. Like it's certain things where it's like, all right, your confidence has to come from somewhere. But a lot of times, even if you you could be butt ugly, but you gonna put that shit on. You gonna dress a certain way. You gonna do things that uh, you know, like whatever your assets are. You're gonna do something that highlights that. Right. Okay. I like your answer. Give me one more number, and then we are gonna jump into it. Um, nineteen. Nineteen. Let's see. I got two nineteen. Let me see which one I want to give you. I got one. Um, nineteen. Could you be with someone who slept with your best friend? Why or why not? Was it a threesome? No. <laughs> ah! Um, I don't think so. Mm. And it's not because I'm a like I feel some type of way about like it being my best friend. I just feel like me and my friends have very different types, mm -hmm. like very different types. Like the type of person that I would talk to is not the type of person that my best friend would talk to. And I feel like that. that no. Nah, uh. Uh. I don't think I like. It's, I don't not, think I it's not dating. It's just she fucked me. You know. No. No matter. Like me and my best friends are like very different. <laughs> very different. I guess. I. I did. You want to give y'all answer <laughs> since we here before we get into y'all want to give y'all answer. I had rolled my eyes when you answered that question because that's actually something that has happened in my life. <laughs> um. And it didn't work out. The reason why. <clears throat> so I found out, okay, I was hooking up. Well, I ain't gonna say hooking up. I was cool with the guy. Mm -hmm. And um, the conversation was like really, really good. So we was just, we would just like link up and vibe. And I was like, okay, I like this. So like maybe like a month into vibe and I found out that he had hooked up with somebody that I was really close with. And so I was instantly, my mind was like, I'm not doing this. I already knew that I was not going to fuck with him, but um, they ended up, it was a whole situation that night when I found out that they had hooked up before. It was, it was, ended up being a whole situation. So I was like, I'm going to hear him out. I'm going to hear her out. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to spark the conversation. I'm not going to be the one that leads into it. If they want to talk about it, they can talk about it. And I'll just see from there. So um, it went like that. And after I heard the guy's conversation, the girl conversation, I had my own little I had my own mind made up about what happened in the situation. So I was like, you know what? I'm still going to try it because I was looking at him as more than a sex partner. Oh, shit. See, so, yeah. And that's the thing. I, he I said, like could you date? I'm not taking nobody serious that then smashed the homie. <laughs> like, you a hoochie. You. Like, you a pass around. <laughs> so, I don't think, I, I mean, personally, it. I'm never going to take anybody serious I'm like that. Sometimes you gotta um, wait your turn. You it didn't work out. I have, I definitely had sex with someone that's had sex with like some friends of mine. Yeah. But I wouldn't take you serious. Like dating is insane. Like, mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. What about you, Mina? Um, Hold honestly. For, which side are we speaking to? I'm Maybe. gonna speak from uh both sides. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I've done it dating wise. Um, with men, however, I don't have that shit to worry about when it comes to women because my best friends ain't gay. Simple, I like that. What about you? What me? Of yeah. course, he's going to do it. Oh, um, <laughs> but I'm not going to date him. Well, it depends. See, I'm I'm at an age where I feel like as long as it ain't been like five of the best friends, one maybe if I could I could deal with if I really like her, but it. If it's somebody that like done did five of the homies, and I got to worry about we going to a cookout and it's like five niggas in the crowd that be like, oh man, I'm, I, she was sucking my dick from the back, and that nigga like, man, did she do the, did she squirt with you? That's when it's kind of like, nah, I can't, I can't date her. But if it's just like, that's why you got to date people that's not from where you from, because they could be a hoe where they from, but you just don't know they was a hoe. You funny as hell. Um, I don't think it's a, I don't even think it's about that. Uh, I definitely think you should date people that aligns with your lifestyle. Because there are people where it's like, so for example, I identify as non-monogamous, right? I don't identify yeah. as poly, which is totally different. I do identify as non-monogamous, which means that if we're not, cool if that. this, we're not married, I can kind of do what I want to do if I feel the need to do that. That does not mean that I'm going to auto monogamy is not the norm for me, basically. You're a nigga, basically. <laughs> Call it what you want. <laughs> <laughs> 
But because I don't identify as monogamous, it might be a situation like I've I've definitely had a situation where I had sex with an uncle and had sex with his nephew. What the fuck? I don't owe neither one of y'all anything. But see, if I do that, I'm a dog ass nigga. Not the uncle and nephew, but the aunt and niece. Nah, that's, that's what y'all know. <laughs> it is what it is. Like if you're not, if you, there's no arrangement, and that's the thing. I feel like a lot of people just because you have sex with somebody now, you think you own them. You think that you own them. You think that you can dictate their actions. You think that you can dictate how they move. At the end of the day, people gonna move how they want to move. You just gotta be cool with you. Gonna you, you need to move how you want to move and what makes you feel good at night when you go to sleep type shit. But the next person, you can't be worried about what they're doing because, again, if they want to do something, they're going to do it, and it has nothing to do with you. I think that's what it is. People are like, oh, well, why, did, why are they doing it to me? No, mm-hmm. they got shit to do with you. I wanted to smash. Yeah, that's you, what it you was. Gotta you got to wait your turn. <laughs> yeah. So since you brought up, like, uh, once you have a sex with someone, they have that feeling of ownership. So how do you feel about one-night stands then? Um, I've... I've had only one one night stand. Of course, it was after I started my whole phase. <laughs> Cause it was like, oh, I've never had a one night stand. Let me try this on for size. And I think the guy did it wrong. Um, <laughs> I think the guy did it wrong. I knew that it was supposed to be a one night stand because I was in Houston. I was gonna leave the next day. Well, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but he kept calling me like, "You in Houston? Why are you worried? Like, you why, are we, why are we? Why are we still in contact? I thought it was supposed to be like, all right, cool. I'd never hear from you again. Like, I was expecting <laughs> that part." And um, then it got to a point where he's like, he, he like, I want to say like a month or two later, he hit me up like, yeah, I'm in the Midwest. I'm trying to see you. like, what? <laughs> like, no, we're like, we're supposed to think like that was supposed to be a one thing. And it's like for like done. But yeah. Um. So, <laughs> if it's a one, why did y'all exchange numbers if it was a one night stand? So they could know where to go to after the club. Oh, no. Right. That's what it was. So we actually we met each other at a bar like crawl type. Okay. Thing. So me and him end up going to his crib or whatever. Okay, cool. Then he drops me, you um, he drops me off back to where my girls was, my Airbnb. Okay, cool. Then he texts me the next morning. He was like, Yeah, I'm trying to see you before you leave again. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> cool, whatever. That's fine. Clearly, you like the coochie. So I'll give you a little more before again. I toodaloo, never see you again. Um, so it wasn't an issue with the exchanging of the number. It was the fact that he kept contacting me that kind of made me feel like, mm, I don't think, I think we, this is like against the rules. I don't know what the one night stand <laughs> rule book is, but I'm pretty sure this ain't in there. So, so as a nigga, you know, you know what that tell me? <laughs> you, he enjoyed it way more than you did. Because did. in his <laughs> mind, I fucked the shit out of her. So when I go to Midwest, she gonna want some more of this dick. But I think in your mind, you were saying like, I, I got my one night stand uh, box checked off, but nigga, right. nah, I'm good. <laughs> if it was good, you would have been like, "Oh, you will? Oh yeah, nigga, pull up." Mm. Yeah, that is not that is a very accurate uh, interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew, I'm glad I ain't never had no problems. I think you a sexologist. I I ain't certified. How can we get Kane certified? I like um, you gotta. <laughs> there are different certification <laughs> programs for sure. Um, but yeah, if that's, if that's something that he want to do, like I did my certification through Dr. Rachel Institute. Uh, I'm not sure if y'all, uh, I'm probably aging myself a little bit, but the reality TV show, The Doctors, Mm-mm. that was out a couple years ago. She was one of those doctors on there. Wow. Okay. So Mina, uh, Shay, how y'all feel about one night stands? Or is that something y'all too bougie for? I know one of y'all bet not lie. He must be talking about you, Mina. I've done them. <laughs> a good bit of them. Did, Shit. How many of them did you spend the block on? None. They were one night stand. Cool. cool. So they, they weren't good. It wasn't even about that. It was uh, it's, I fucked and it bye. Here for a good time, not a long time. Yeah, not a long time. <laughs> Shay, what about you? I don't think I've ever had a one night stand and um what? I'm I mean, I'm trying to recall. Jody, you have to excuse us. Please. No, y'all good. I mean, I think I, I'm experienced now. I'm an experienced person, so I'm just trying to go through my catalog here and Not see. Not the catalog. Like, <laughs> I, a one-night stand where I ain't never hooked up with a person no more after that. Have I fucked on the first night? Yes, I have. But it's the difference between fucking on the first night and a one-night stand. It is. So. So, I'm sure. Uh, Jody, I listen to your podcast. 
you've had a threesome before. Mm. Uh, Multiple. I had one this week. Hey, oh, okay. This time. Okay, this time. You feeling good today? <laughs> yeah, I'm a unicorn. Um. <laughs> the third person involved is the first time you've met that person. You've never talked to them again. Is that what you said? Wait, say that again. I can't hear you. Can you hear that? Um, it's super low. I could barely hear you. Good. What about now? There we go. Oh, that's good. There we go. Yep. Big daddy back. All right. So what I was saying was, uh, say you're with somebody you usually have sex with on a regular, right? And then y'all bring in a third person that you've never met before. That um, just happened. Facts. So if you never have sex with that person again, would that be considered a one night stand? That third person? No, no, I wouldn't, because that's it's it's a totally different dynamic at that point. Like now we're talking about within the threesome realm. And also, I think part of something being a one night stand is your intentions behind it. Like you intend for that to be a one night stand as well. Like I'm not going to do this again. But after the one that just happened this week, I'm like, oh yeah, we could fuck her again. Wow. <laughs> Where the hell are these type of women in South Carolina? Good God, <laughs> um, so, so all you guys, I want to ask you guys because I've never had a threesome. I have great sex, but I've never had a threesome. Nobody wants to share me. Um, mm-hmm. But when you guys do have threesomes, do you like when you're the third person or have it maybe, do you fully participate? Like you trying to show off, you trying to goddamn put it down, or are you just a willing participant that just going through the motions to get through it to say, I fulfilled my partner's fantasy or this is something they wanted to do. So I just tagged along or are you in a motherfucker trying to show off? Okay. I definitely, um, and I, I tell people that if you've never had a threesome, don't do it because you're trying to fulfill your partner's fantasy. That is the, that's a surefire way for you not to enjoy it. I'm trying to fulfill my fantasy. (laughs) Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like you, but both of you guys have to want to engage in that, right? Right. So I've been in a situation, my very first threesome, I could tell that the girl was doing it for the guy. And when the girl, when a girl does something for a guy and not for herself, it is not a pleasurable experience for anybody because Mm -hmm. there's weird energy in the room now. Right. So my very first threesome, it was kind of a one and a half some. Me and the girl was not really interacting. Like it just, it, it didn't hit. And then when I had a threesome that did hit and it was with a married couple, I'm like, you can tell that you're a part, you're, you're just, bring, you're being brought in to experience love within their dynamic. So mm-hmm. you're kind of getting a glimpse of what it is that they experience, right? So you can see the boundaries, you can see the respect, you can see the love. You literally like it's like you, you, you. Well, I'm from Chicago, so we be stepping. It's like when the that older, smooth guy mm-hmm. stepping with two ladies and everybody moving and grooving. That's exactly what a threesome should feel like. It should just be a beautiful dance that you just invited someone else to experience with you. Um, also. Um, so one, you definitely have to, uh, you have to want it. So I've been the third. And then this last time I was the person who we brought a third into. So I've been in both situations, right? Um, as a third, you cannot assume that you, you, you kind of have to get a feel for what's going on between Mm -hmm. the the couple because, (laughs) Nonverbal communication is what 55% of communication. So you'll be able to pick up off that what is kind of acceptable and what's not acceptable. But I tell people, uh, if as a woman, if you know that you're not down to eat no pussy, don't even do it. Don't have a threesome. Don't do it. Just don't do it at all. Because I wish you would think that you finna invite me to your bedroom and I'ma just be eating pussy oh, and yeah. eating dick and not getting you can go to hell. Girl, say that right. She's giving me. Tips, you right. go to hell because I don't even like. I lo- look. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a hetero flexible. I'm not a bisexual female. I like freaky shit, but I'm not equally attracted to women and men. So I'm the type of person where it's like, no, I have to. You know, I'm here for the experience. I'm not here because I'm attracted to women. That's not what it is. I'm just a freaky bitch that like doing freaky shit. <laughs> so, so, are you jumping off the dressel during that time? If you if the I feel like it. Okay, but if the energy yeah. off, you kind of just like gonna get through it. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's a vibe thing. I feel like, you know how like uh when you see women dancing on each other in a club and it just it just seems like they in sync? 
Yeah. That's what it should be. You just gotta, it's, it's a nonverbal thing. You have to really feel that energy, whatever that energy is. So it's like, all right, cool. You can tell what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. When I had the threesome with the um, married couple, the, the husband didn't penetrate me. And I was perfectly fine with that. I was suck, I was sucking dick. I was sucking dick. But the husband didn't penetrate me. And I was perfectly fine with that because I ended up having another threesome the following day. And that that man did penetrate me. <laughs> so it all worked out. I was happy with the outcome. Um, but yeah, I it's a vibe thing. It's a vibe. And mm-hmm. the thing is, it wasn't that the the husband just he was trying to get a feel for what was going on as well. He mm-hmm. he so it's like again, everybody should kind of like vibe and see what's acceptable. You might do this and you might, you know, like uh for example, um, and also, also let me say this. <laughs> Whoever the woman is in the relationship or the marriage or whatever, she should lead everything. I tell people that all she the is in time, control. She is in if, control. If a couple approaches me and it's the man, I won't oh. do it because no, there's no boundaries. No, hell no. You're not about to get me cussed out and I'm in here fighting this bitch because you did exactly. some weird shit. No. And right. I also never let a man, if I'm having a threesome with a couple, he will never come with me. Ever. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree. Like, your lady. I'll come in into you. No. Both of you. <laughs> you funny as hell. You funny as hell. But yeah, I've been oh, approached shit. by men all the time. And I straight up tell them, like, you need to send your girl for me. Yep. You need to send your girl for me. And if me and your after you send your girl for me, if we don't vibe, then guess what? That's out the door. Because if oh, you God. think I'm I don't show up for threesomes for a man. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm showing up for a threesome for. I'm here for a good experience, right? Now, again, this last time. I had a threesome with someone that I had been having sex with consistently for a while. And it was his birthday weekend. And I'm like, you know, like we having sex. He's like, I'm going to line up a threesome. I'm like, who you finna call? He showed me a picture. I'm like, yeah, she cute. Tell her to slide. That's a great birthday. That's how it's supposed mm-hmm. to go. That's a great birthday. <laughs> Man, that's a great birthday. Mm-hmm. So uh, you want to give your experience? My experience? Um... Like, did, did you show out or did you just kind of like, you know, this is what he wants, so I'm going to just do it? So my first experience, um, I wanted to, I knew that I wanted to experience. I, I like girls, so, and I like niggas. So I just was like, okay, that would be cool. So I, I chose the girl um, and it was a beautiful experience. I like, I follow everything that Jody was saying because the girl, she, it seems as if she's done it before because she was very like, I mean, the our first encounter with her, she was like, I'm on my period. And now, do I believe that? I, so we, I, I want to. period don't start nothing but a sentence nowhere. Hold on. So we, she <laughs> wasn't initially, I'm trying to say this without saying it. So this girl provides a service. I booked her for a service, but me and her always flirted with each other. So mm-hmm. it was just like, all right, girl, you get over here with me and my nigga, ain't no telling. So it was just kind of a conversation like that. Right. So, um, she asked me, like, when we were, because we rode together, everything, she was like, you know, what's off limits? And I was just like, you know, we just vibing. There's nothing off limits. So I appreciated that. But when we got there, well, when we was on the way, that's when she told me that she was on her period or whatever. And I just feel like, honestly, I don't think she was on it. I think that was just her way of, like, I want to see how y'all interact first. So with that, um, she wanted me. So me and her interacted first and he joined in. Um, And I I don't know, that experience, even though that first time she did not get penetrated or whatever, but she, you know, she was fucking with me. Like she was, you know, she was kind of like. Was a little support or whatever. No, we didn't. We didn't scissor anything. She ate my pussy. Um, we her pussy. I did not. She was bleeding. <laughs> so she, what? She. <laughs> well, she said she was. So we never got to that. So the first experience, even though there was three people there, I don't know if I would really call it a, a threesome because the first experience, like, she ate my pussy. She watched him fuck me. She gave him some head. You know, all the little kiss and shit like that. It was like that. Or whatever. That's now the second time that we leaned yeah. over her, it was just a whole different experience. A, a, a whole a fucking whole ganzel. It it was amazing. But the girl was good though because she don't, you know, she tried to get a feel for me. And it's like, baby, I'm cool. Like 
Mm-hmm. You know so she was trying to play off of me and what I was going for. I think, like I said, the first time she was like, oh, I'm on my period. So she wanted to see like what we was on. She wanted to see how he was going to fuck me. And it's like, well, we use condoms over here. We do. And Jody, does that does that take away from the threesome if you're using condoms? Does that take no? You're, you're the sex no, all here. No, no. <laughs> I don't. Th- I don't think it takes away. Um, and I don't even. And I will also say this because you said you don't know if you would call the first experience a threesome. It's still a threesome because oral mm-hmm. sex is sex. Okay. So I would. You know what I'm saying? Like again, I think people are just used to uh, talking about threesomes in the context of a man to women. The man fucking both women, the women eating each other out, boom, threesome. Mm-hmm. But it can look like so many different things. Like I said, the threesome that I had with the married couple, the man didn't penetrate me. It was still a beautiful threesome. Um, it it just depends on how you want to go about your experience. Don't, mm-hmm. you know, look at some kind of oh, this is the standard. This this has to be a threesome, and everything else is like, I don't know what it was. No, y'all was up and out fucking. <laughs> and one thing about me, I like to watch. That's okay. really, I, I like to watch. Like I just like don't you even got another Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch no Diddy. I gotta start saying that. No, no I don't like that. I don't, I don't like the no Diddy stuff. I don't like it. If someone what? who is in the kink community. I feel like I just feel a way. Like the more people say, like, oh, no Diddy or use Diddy as like the staple, the staple child for like freaky and kinky shit. I I'm like, no, no. Because now people gonna think like the kink community is just filled with creeps. Oh, I see. <laughs> Look, I don't kink shame. And and there are people that it's people in my circle that's like, all right, cool. Joe, like I'm probably one of the creepiest people that they know. Creepy Pervert. in the sense that, you know, I make everything about sex. Pervert. Right. But I don't hide that about me. And I don't want people to shame that about me either. Um being a part of the kink community does not also mean that you are unethical, that you are, you participate in things that are non-consensual for others, because that's the issue. The issue is not that of being freaky and kinky. The issue is of consent. Who is consenting to certain things and who is not? And see, I'm glad you said that because I don't think I'm part of the kink community because I don't know exactly what the requirements <laughs> is to be part of it. But one thing that I did take from your show is that um, you live in the gutter. And I do too. I make everything about sex. We could be having a conversation about finances and somewhere I'm, I'm going to find a way to, to throw my 10 inch dick in there. You know what I'm saying? That's, oh, that's, 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 so I don't know my part of the kink community, God. but I'm definitely in the gutter all the time because I feel like sex is a beautiful thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and even when it's beautiful, it's something that also can be humorous. Um, yeah. I so, think more people are in the kink community than they actually allow themselves to admit. For example, if you know that you are someone who has like a fetish, mm-hmm. right? Or you know that you are someone who, um, you know, like you you enjoy watching people have sex. That's voyeurism. You like to show people your sex videos, or you like for people to watch you have sex. Like the other day, me and my me and the guy, you know, that I'm having sex with, we having sex, and I start sucking his dick, and he FaceTime somebody to watch it. Like I like shit like that. I'm an oh, exhibitionist, God. right? So it's like those things are a part of the kink umbrella. Like, so I think that people just, oh, it's either you're vanilla or you're on that weird freaky shit. And so many people want to classify themselves as vanilla when you might be into some other shit. Like if you like to be tied up, you like bondage, you like when people slap you and spit in your mouth, guess what? That's kinky. Kinky <laughs> so at what point did you become comfortable with the kinky shit because a lot of times we we get this idea of what's normal when it comes to sex people tell us you know what's regular what's normal and everybody try to be like that but like you said there are people Mm -hmm. that do like shit that's outside of the norm so Mm -hmm. for you at what point did you real at what point did you say you know what I like shit that's outside of the norm and I'm okay with liking shit because people do try to shame you know what I'm saying so yes for you like this is just who I am so uh a couple different things right so the good thing for me was that when I started, when I started, oh, sorry, my ring light went out. When I started my journey, hold on. Let's see what's back there. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. 
<laughs> All right, can y'all see me now? Yep. All right, so when I started my journey, it was at the, like, I was podcasting, I was becoming a sex coach, Um, I started teaching, like, all kind of back-to-back, mm-hmm. right? So for me, it was, it kind of went hand-in-hand hand with the more I learned about sex, the more I gave myself permission to enjoy different types of sex. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing, these people that shame at me, Y'all wish y'all could have the type of sex I have. I have amazing sex. So if you over there complaining about, oh, I've never had an orgasm or this, I don't, this man ain't fucking me right. I feel bad for you. Because if you gave yourself permission to really experience pleasure at a different level, you would understand that it doesn't, me personally, it don't matter who I fuck. I'm going to have good sex because I know how to have good sex. You accept that. I don't, oh. give other people, I don't give other people control over whether or not I have a pleasurable experience. That's y'all going into the bedroom like, oh, I'm going to let him make me come. No, watch watch this trick I do so that I make myself come. And then you over here like, what the fuck is she doing? Right. right. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you really have to give yourself permission to experience pleasure because at the end of the day, these people that are shaming you, what bills are they paying? Are they the ones fucking you? Like, it's so many, there's literally no benefit. There's, there's, there's no kind of, uh, there's no real way for me to feel something from someone trying to shame me when I know that they will never, they, they won't know how it smells. You'll never know how it smells. So why do I care about what you say? <laughs> See, that's what I be saying. People are like, you always pulling your dick out. That shit at my dick and I love it. And other people do too. Like, don't shame me. You know what I'm saying? Because this motherfucker like that, that wish, you know what I'm saying, they had big dicks. You know what I no, mean? But It's just the point. You be embarrassing the fuck out of us. That's right? all. I ain't embarrassed. <laughs> I want y'all to send, put it in your group chat. No, <laughs> but uh, I, I did have a partner one time that said that she enjoyed having sex with a guy that had a little dick because she was able to teach herself how to come on the little dick. Like the big dick, she was like, it hurt. Is that in the third? But when she would fuck the partner that had a little dick, and if mm. she got on top and shit, she'd be like, well, I know how to squeeze this or do that to make yep. myself. Fun. And it was actually more enjoyable and pleasurable with him. Because she could make herself orgasm than the guy that had the big dick that was plowing her out. And I was like, well, when um, when I was dealing with men, I would masturbate with a smaller dildo just because it, I was able to learn myself better. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, th- I think that's what, what she was saying. Like, you got to kind of not depend on the guy to make yourself, to make you come, but you can also make yourself come. But does that mean in, in your mind, you're somewhere totally, totally different while he's fucking you if you got to like do your own little trick? No. Not necessarily, not necessarily, because in the same way when you masturbate, you have to, you mentally, emotionally, physically, you have to make sure that you're present, right? Because that's the only way that you'll be able to experience it to begin with. I'm not saying that you have to be thinking about another motherfucker. That's something totally, that's (laughs) no. But you do have to kind of like tap in with your energy to make yourself get to that point. You have to be super comfortable and you have to give yourself permission to come. Like, you know how people be saying like, oh, a man, when he talk you through an orgasm and he's like, go ahead, come for me. Like, you know, let it go. I want it. Let it out. And you're like, ah, shit. Give it to me. (laughs) Give me that shit. Let it go. Exactly. Because again, like as women, we (laughs) can... Women have been socially constructed to not enjoy sex, right? Like we're always being shamed for, you know, sexual being sexually liberated or be, you know, our sexual expression. Whereas men is like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They get a pat on the back. The moment that a woman is open sexually, it's like, oh, she a hoe, she a slut, she this, she that. Hello, but here's none of again, none of that matters. That and women again, we've been socially constructed to view sex as like, oh, well. This is something that men do to me. That's right. women have been socially constructed to view sex as something that men do to us right. versus something that we experience together. Yep. And it's crazy that you say that about masturbating. You have to physically be there because when I used to masturbate and watch pornos, if I came before the guy on a porno finished, that mean I nutted the girl he was fucking on the porno. <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> like, damn, so we need a plan B. Like I, I came first, so like. Damn, that is saying? hilarious. I mean, that you know, that's when I thought I trained myself when I was younger. Like, cause you know, when you were <laughs> like middle school, high school, I don't know how, I think you say you were 30 when you enter your whole phase. Yes. 30. So like in high middle school and high school, when guys start losing their virginity, the biggest fear is you got a small dick or you come fast. 
I ain't had a robot. Well, watching dick. porn is going to definitely make you think you got a small dick, even if it ain't. <laughs> I wasn't worried. I was <laughs> the second part about coming fast. I was so I what I used to do was I watch a porn and I jack off, and when I feel I'm about to come, I stop and the shit would go back down. And then I start jacking off again. You're edging. So you were edging. So now when I when I finally have sex, my mind is always tra- already trained to I uh, let that shit drop. So now girls like, God damn, you ain't came yet. But that's when I had to learn the difference between fucking for a long time. Sometimes you fuck so long it ain't pleasurable no more to mm. the right amount mm-hmm. of time. Shit out of you because like you don't be plowing her for an hour like nigga she ain't enjoying the shit. Anymore. Right. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that whole thing about the masturbating part that was very helpful for me to be able to be I think a decent sex partner because I didn't want to be in that group chat about that nigga nut in three minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I definitely I tell people all the time if you have not itched, start. Start. Y'all uh, itch? Y'all I, itch? I have. You too. I'm an edger. I didn't know that was until I listened to your podcast. I didn't know that was a thing. Really? I I just thought I was like uh, yeah. I yeah, I was going like it's a, it's, it's a surefire way to make sure that you last a very long time yeah, I thought I was so going make- because i because i edge so much like when it come to threesomes and stuff like that yeah it's up yeah i, I mean I <laughs> know. It's an edge when it comes to dealing with a woman like a man is it's okay like i my it's it's there but when it comes to like dealing with a woman i don't know why but it's like I come so fast, and then I be doing the bitch. Oh, yeah, no. and see, the girl and be and the girl like, be more experienced. That's why I had the edge because you know women could have multiple orgasms, and y'all keep and going. Keep going. But with yep. niggas, depending on the situation, once we get that first one out of there, I talk to you in the morning. I don't feel <laughs> that way. when I deal with a woman like. I probably can get two, and then after that, it's like, ooh, girl, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that girl that be looking two, at me like, is, are you done? See, yeah, like, you two is crazy. <laughs> like, for us men, like, we done been sitting with you at the bar or whatever, buying your drinks. We looking at you like, I'm about to fuck the shit out of her. I'm on this Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? A nigga might be done snuck a honey pack in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? He done built this shit up, and then he hit you for a good 30, 45, and he busts out of this world. I saw my heart about to thump out his chest, and then the girl be like, okay, round two? That nigga gonna be like, who? <laughs> so in order to prevent that, let me go ahead and edge you, as you say, for about an hour. That way you don't want no round two. I want no round two. We just wake up tomorrow with the stink breath. We, we start over. But <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I gave y'all a head. I gave y'all a head. Um, Jody, I, I want to get to uh, one more topic that I, I heard you talk about, which was, um, correct me if I said it wrong, but consensual and non-consent Fantasy, I think is what you said. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So before you go on about that, um, I had a conversation with a bunch of friends of mine, some male, some female, was all at a kickback. And I told them that men have, and don't take this the wrong way, uh, y'all people out there, more men have raped women than they know. And by that, I mean, I'm not talking about the physical hold down, took it rape. I mean, more like she's short, it, she's short at the kickback. She's throwing those shots back. She's drunk and you put your eye on her. Her to drink. Yeah, I'm gonna get her. You know what I'm saying? Because now, when she's get, when she gets inebriated, she can't fully say yes or no. You know what I'm saying? But and you know, as a man, the drunker I get her, the easier it's gonna be. So, uh, with that being said, can you explain more what your consensual and non-consent fantasy uh, details? That way, anybody listening don't toe the line and fall on the wrong side of that fantasy if they find themselves having those same fantasies after you explain what it is. Because I think more people have those type of fantasies because sometimes I always ask myself when women do get raped at the taken way, do they get wet? Do they enjoy it? Even though they're being raped, like... So there's a like? there's a difference between your physical response to mm-hmm. your body just doing what it does right, right, versus right. like, all right, the mental and emotional aspect of what rape is, right? Sexual assault comes with a physical and emotional aspect to it. Versus just your bodily response. So that's first. Um, second, if I take three shots of any, like some fucking Hennessy, I'm probably wet already. Nobody did that to me. Yeah. My, body is, my body is doing what it does, right? So those things kind of, there's no real correlation there. Um, also, if you, if this is your first, I, uh, so one of my, uh, one of my uh, really good friends always talks about how, like, he will not have sex with a woman for the first time if she's been drinking. So it doesn't matter if she's coming on to you or whatever the case is, right? Hold on one second, guys. You need to grow up. 
You really need to grow up for real. For do, real. do y'all have those fantasies though? Where it's kind of like borderline rape, but it's like y'all, it, uh, I guess, acting out rape, but it's not really rape. I never had those. I think I do. Okay. Um, I really get turned on with aggressive sex, like, uh, and I'm not talking about you choking me. I'm talking about you like Pounding grabbing me. me. No, oh. I hate don't pound me on oh, shit. <laughs> um, but. Like grabbing me, holding me down, type shit, or me putting up a fight, telling you no. Shit, I don't shit the fuck go. up. Yeah, like rape scenes and movies. Certain rape scenes and movies get me wet. Sheesh. I don't. Um. I to me personally, I don't like it. I don't like. Um, rough shit. No, I, I like. I mean, I can take some rough sets, but I don't like. Um. I don't know if I'm at like I okay. This one girl I was hooking up with, she did that. She, she stood. No, she filmed. She's okay. cute as fuck. We went out of town, went all out, this and that. Oh, I know who you're Came back, and um, <laughs> we got back to the hotel room, and I was going to, like, fuck her, and she was just like, mm, no, like, you know, she added like she didn't want it, and to me, that had, I knew that, you know, after the next day, I was like, okay, she wanted me to take it, but I don't want to do that, and I don't want nobody to feel like I want them to do that. Baby, I am willing. Like, <laughs> if it... <laughs> Come get this pussy. No, but it's not even about uh not being willing. Like, you can let the person know. The person might already know that that's what you're into. Like, mm. I'm the type of person, if we, for instance, walking out the club and this girl grabs me, instantly starts kissing me aggressively, like, push me up against the mm-hmm. side you turn of the club on. and everything, I'm turned on instantly. But I'm just like, hold on, wait, let's get out of the public eye. You can keep that aggressive shit because I love it. At this point, I want to go to the crib. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think I do have that because yeah. that fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have that fantasy. I don't. You like to take it. Do I like to take it? Like, do you like to take like, take what a Hold girl up, a girl's pussy? Like, do you like to like? Like I said, I think I think all men have. Like it'd be like if a girl be like. Um, oh no, I want you to start. You like no, I you like that shit. Not nah, like, like every nigga that has done. Um, lay down in the bed naked with a female, and she be like, All right, now you know we ain't doing that. And every nigga done got hard and tried to slide a dick between her butt cheeks <laughs> or done try to put a finger in it. And she be like, mm-hmm. She don't say no. She be like, you, Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a a slope, the tip in there. You put the tip in, and she like, uh, she ain't saying stop yet. But she's like, No, I thought you thought I told you no. And he's like, Yeah, they just try to get a little more in there, and a little more in there. The next thing you know, she's now she's complying. But, but, that's a, but an, an enthusiastic, yes. Is no like it's, it's either you get an enthusiastic yes I want to do this or the answer is no. So I definitely tell people that if she doesn't initiate it, especially if liquor is involved, like even if liquor is involved, if she's initiating it, wait, just wait. Like when you sober up a little bit and you are coherent and you can make this decision, then great, we can do this because the last thing you want to do is. You Get know, go ahead and have sex with her, and then guess what? The next day she wakes up and feels different. Yep. And now you in a sticky situation because you couldn't have dick discipline. Yep. So it no, ain't no, oh, I'm gonna try to just slab my dick between her butt cheeks and see what she gonna let me get away with. No, just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it because now you're labeled as uh, you know, uh sexual Rapist. assault, um, yeah. you know, having you know committed sexual assault, and once you labeled as that. Once you label somebody that just take pussy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and see, and that's the crazy thing. When I had that conversation, you would be surprised how many of the guys in the room was like, yeah, I did that shit in college. Uh, but that's because we are, um, again, the same way that women are socially, you know, con- we're socialized to not, you know, like, participate in sex. Like, women are, like, young boys are told, go out there and have sex. Girls are told, don't do it at all. Mm-hmm. Until you're we're being told two totally different things. Right. So what are these little boys doing with these little girls? You see what I'm saying? Or if we um, so it's 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 so many different layers, and I'm just gonna try mm-hmm. to like stick with one. Um, but uh, our so, there's so much rape culture ingrained in our society, like from the movies, like the music. If you look at any of the Twilight vampire movies, there's that's rape culture. Like and it, you know, like uh, we we see like the the teenage girl who falls for the older man who comes and sweeps her off. The, that's grooming, right? Yep. So it's like we see. Oh, so shit! Much, 
Yeah, like we see so much. Uh, <laughs> we see so much things. Uh, we see so many things that are romanticized mm. about sexual assault. So we think that that's how it's supposed to be, but it's not. And we know that it's not because guess what? That's how a lot of people get these cases. And that's because them people up there be doing that shit. The people, them rich people up there, they be doing that shit. That's why they, they kind of try to like uh, soften it by showing it in, in movies like Twilight and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, tell them what that uh consent. But yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. so that's Somebody. like I said. Uh, when it comes to uh that uh, if a woman has been drinking, just don't do it. Don't mm. do it. Wait until y'all have sex sober. And then, you know, like you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like you'll have a better idea of how the experience will be and you'll be more comfortable. Drunk pussy, it ain't that deep. It's not that deep. Right? It's great though. Um, drunk pussy ain't that deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as, as far as me, as um, when it comes to my uh, consensual non-consent fantasy, my this is a role play thing for me. So uh-huh. that's the difference. Like it's a it's a role play thing for me. My fantasy is that of role play where the person that I currently have sex with, I've been me and him share locations. So he could easily pop up on me and kidnap me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I can like, oh, who are you? What are you doing to me? Like it's a role play thing, right? Nice. It's not one of those things where it's like some random motherfucker on the street, I'm um, you know, taking shots and he like, Yeah, I know you want this. Like, whoa, no, you're <laughs> And I'm from Chicago, so ain't, I'm actually not finna. I'm finna empty the clip on you. I'm not finna talk. You from like, sixty third? What, what the fuck is we talking about? Right. But when you, when you, uh, if you are someone who has a consensual non consent fantasy, I suggest talking to your partner, telling them what the fantasy is and why you want to experience the fantasy with them. And then you literally like, okay, cool. We're going to, you know, this is how we're going to do it. Like, I'm going to leave the back door open and I want you to come in at like one o'clock in the morning and, Mm -hmm. oh, it's a robber. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So actually, actually tell your partner what your fantasy is so that it can be a pleasurable experience for both of y'all. And also don't assume that just because you want to experience this fantasy that your partner wants to experience this fantasy because your partner might be like, "Mm, no, I don't really want to do this. And see, that was going to be my next question to you Jody is have you ever encountered someone that was like what the fuck is she on like have you ever encountered someone that you talked about your fantasy with and they was just like I'm not doing that or Uh, even or if they did it after the fact they was like okay I'm not fucking with her no more have you ever experienced that before I have not um, but also I have not experienced my consensual non-consent fantasy yet I do have friends who uh, I have two guy friends that were dealing with a girl who had a similar fantasy. One of the friends said he did it, but he was like, mm, "No, it just kind of made it took it, it. It didn't make me feel right." Mm-hmm. But also, again, that's why it's important to have conversations with your partners because the same way you have boundaries, your partners have boundaries as well. So just right. make sure you understand each other's boundaries. Um, any other fantasy that I wanted to experience, like the guy that I'm currently having sex with, is pretty much like, all right, we doing it. <laughs> it's crazy. I just realized I've I've had one of those and didn't even know it. Had one of what? Like, like a consent, a non-consent, consensual fantasy. Okay. I didn't even know How, it. What? Let's hear it. What so, happened? So, so a friend of mine was like, "Yo, <clears throat> I got this party chick. If you with it, you know, so I could set it up." I was like. Tch. Cause most most times I've never had a threesome, but I ran a couple of trains, and most times the train shit is happening like on some drunk shit, you know. In college, you know, you got fraternities and all that shit, be like some drunk shit. This nigga called me twelve o'clock in the afternoon on some sober shit, like yo, at four o'clock I'm gonna come pick you up. We're going over to the chick crib, just follow my lead. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so we get over there, and we walk in the living room. He's like, yo, it's the uh, it's the cable guy. I heard you having uh, trouble with your with your cable. Where's your box located? And she was like, oh, it's over there on the um on the TV stand, uh, the outlet's behind the wall. He was like, well, can you go uh show me where the outlet is and bend over and uh, show me where the outlet is and I can see if I can work on it. So she goes over there and when she bent over, he was like, put your dick in her. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, now? He was like, yeah, put your dick in her. So when she bent over the damn the TV stand, I put my dick in her. And now it's like a full-blown train, you know what I'm saying? So I think I had one of those. I ain't had a threesome yet, but I think I had one of those. 
So uh, we, we I'm, the I, I hate to be, I hate to break it to you, but that was a threesome. Right, that is. Oh no, 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 no! A threesome is two no, girls, that one is guy. A threesome, sir. No, what did we talk about earlier? What did we talk about earlier? How people want to say that no, a threesome has to look like this. My right. perception is my reality. No, you full of <laughs> shit. You are completely. Full you had a. It's giving delusion. You had a threesome. No, yeah, and the reason that men would prefer the term train when two men are present is because they think that this the idea of a train has a power dynamic to it. It's a more powerful word being used than saying a threesome where we all has be like they don't want to be like, no, a threesome is when they you know, two, no, we're we not gay, way. so no, we didn't it's have a threesome. No, you still had a you had a type of threesome because it's no different than again when uh, two women are present and a man is present, but the women don't interact. But see, in my mind, a threesome means we all interact. The train was you go, I go. You want to go again? I bet <laughs> I'm gonna go again. Like y'all was in the same room, even if y'all had just high five. Guess what? Threesome. <laughs> Nah, I'm, I'm gonna call my nigga when we get done with this. And I'm down. <laughs> it's fine. Me. Again, a lot of a lot of men, they're gonna look. Y'all gonna die on that hill, and that's cool. But guess what? You're not. It, it's okay. It was a threesome. It's your bestie. Hey man. Hey. Yeah. My dog. He's good for that too. He's good for that. I don't know. I, I was like, how you even be doing that shit? He's like, man, you just gotta kind of throw the bait out there on the phone with him and random conversation. Like, yo, if me and my man came over, like, how would you feel if he pulled his dick out? And she'd be like. I don't know. I have to see. Or if she she might be with it, but if she be like, nigga, hell know what I look like, then you know she ain't with it. I mean, that's what I was telling you when all y'all men have to do is really have a conversation with your woman and you would learn a lot about her. You would learn that she's into a lot of this freaky shit. There's a lot of shit that you would have access to if you just open your mouth and talk. Yeah. Simple but shit. Also, but also with that, it's something about men that, for whatever reason, men hate their girlfriends. Let's, let, yep. I'm just going to say I Men can... hate their girlfriends because the moment that you know that your girlfriend is really with this, now you're looking at her sideways like, hey, you been doing this? this? Yep. <laughs> Who you did this for? Yeah. Who else you? So it's like, well, do you hate me? Because I want to. I thought you wanted to have fun and now you mad. But, but exactly. Maybe... What are we doing here? But maybe if we find that out during the dating phase, we could be with it. But if you wait to bring that, that damn monster out. After I done committed to you, then it's kind of like. But that's fuck? still your fault for not having the conversation. Even if she didn't, it's still two people. So you she might have withheld that information. Up. No, you could have brought the shit up. I did. She might have withheld it. Then she's a liar, and you should stop fucking with her anyway, because she ain't honest with herself. Well, that that comes that she gotta have with herself, not me. Because yeah. honestly, that's why I tell people, people I don't I don't hold back when it comes to who I am sexually. Because if we not gonna fuck around, then we just not gonna fuck around. I'm telling Period. you, and if you can't handle me sexually, then maybe we can't fuck around. We ain't gonna fuck that part. None. We, I can't. We can't fuck around. No, if I can't get none, I don't want to wait six months, three weeks either. Nope. And I want to do it more than just one. If you claim somebody. you feeling me and I'm feeling you, what the hell we waiting for? We grown. We fucking. Yeah, I ain't got to <laughs> six months shit. But what? And then I get it in this trash. No. Right. Because if it ain't nasty, no. I'm definitely. I definitely don't want it. So, <laughs> lastly, whole phase. You've had your whole phase yet. I have. You had your whole face? Oh, you definitely had your no, whole face. No, I had my whole face. <laughs> oh, how important is body count in today's society now that more people are being more sexual, more open about their sexuality, their uh, uh, flexibleness, or whatever word you call it earlier? How important, <laughs> is, uh, how important is body count now? And is it as shameful to know your body count or say it as it was, say, 10, 15 years ago? Because back then, you'd be like, Oh, I only have five bodies, but you'd be lying. As now, can you be honest with yourself and people and it shouldn't be a problem if you had 100 partners or 90 partners? Hold on. My connection kind of messing up. Hold on. The body room. count don't matter to me at this point because I'm, I'm going to just mind my business. What you did before me ain't got shit to do with me. As long as you ain't got the damn I the swear damn to God, ninja. as long as you ain't got no shit, we good. As long as you ain't got that ninja. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a um, body count kind of girl. Now, I ain't gonna cap. It can be. It doesn't have to be the body count, but sometimes it can be a certain who person. in that body count that made me be like, okay, yeah. I don't know. How the hell he gonna remember? No, it, it don't. It's not up to him to remember. People talk. People talk. True. true, true. People talk. Probably forty percent of the ass I got came from people talking. <sighs> I ain't gonna lie to you. You right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's, that's so why, what that's they little, say? Oh, such little, and such got I don't know what this is. And then you, what. then you go for if they if you heard it. Like, what does the comp when you say people talk? What does that conversation look like? Sometimes, sometimes niggas talk too much because they want to brag to say that they got somebody that other niggas ain't had, not knowing that female might have been already been interested in one of those other brothers. But you just got her first. Uh, sometimes niggas might not even be interested at all, and y'all just sitting around kicking the shit. They be like, bro. That motherfucker got down, suck your dick to her eyes water. Uh. And then a nigga be like, shit, I want to I see what that be like. Uh. Next thing you know, you hit them up on, on the inbox or something, and you see what they bite. Some girls will say, well, you know, I, I fucked your home, boy. You know what I'm saying? Some girls are act oblivious and don't even say shit. You know what I'm saying? It is with it, like whatever, whatever. So, like I said, sometimes I think like 40% of the ass that I've got just came off me having sex with somebody and like I said, that's why I love group chats. I get in that, I get put in that group chat. Or I just get told about, I get talked about amongst the conversation, and I've got the inboxes that was like, "Oh, I heard about you." Uh, well, I heard this and that and the third, and you be like, "Shit, you want to see?" Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it happens. People talk, and I think nowadays, especially with social media, when we were coming up in high school and there was no social media, it might have been the two ways or the pages or something. You gotta wait till you confront that person physically to be like to see if they damn gonna bite. Whereas now I can hear something about you at five or two amongst a group conversation, and I can inbox you at five or four. You know what I'm saying? Whereas back then you had a high school or fresh in college, you heard something about somebody, you had to wait till you caught their ass in the hallway or something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now it's the, the communication is so plentiful to where now, like I can get in contact with her, I can see what she with it, you know what I'm saying? And then now at the point it comes to whether or not the niggas a tender dick that told you the information. <laughs> But the same way she told me, hey, before we do this, you know, I fucked your homeboy. After you fuck her, she go back and say, hey, you know, I fucked your homeboy. Is that homeboy go dig and be like, but well, damn, nigga, how you back me like that? You know what I'm saying? Some niggas be like that. Me? Is she going to give it to you, my brother? Hey, no power to you. Oh. <laughs> Y'all niggas is urgent. I mean, one time I was like, hey, you don't know your dick in the group chat? I said, good. <laughs> good. They won't tee me up like that. Nah, they could tee me, pee me, whatever. That's what I was saying too when yeah. they did that. Shit. I don't know tee what people up. say about me. I don't know what my little... shit. You saw what Facebook said about you. Ain't it? You know, we had this whole conversation, baby. You was viral. Say she got that macaroni. I ain't lying. Say that shit loud too. She got that macaroni. I think honestly, I think that was a public publicity stunt. I think because why would well, I be? Who, I mean, why would I be first? I think that was just. But something they went by height. Off of going. They went you by height. Did you capitalize off of it? Because um, I wanted y'all too. I was rooting for y'all. I didn't, um, cause it was just a lot of mixed things. Like there were people that I got a middle school age child. Um, she's not, she got certain socials, but she don't got Facebook. Um, but there are a lot of kids that have Facebook and I've seen like young kids sharing this, like who these old ass hoes is <laughs> like, you know, I seen different stuff like that. So it was like, oh my God, I don't want my child to be associated with something like this. I don't want nobody to make her middle school years fucking terrible because her mama got some good pussy but and it, and then it was like a lot of people just took what they wanted to take from it oh y'all if your pussy get too wet you got something or oh if you're um uh, how all these people know your pussy wet it and it it really came down to if someone inboxed you and just said your name and i i think i think for me honestly especially put me first i think that was just to get the shit going because people know i play on social media it went by hype I got like I got like a lot of followers, a lot of interaction on my social media. Right. So I think it was just something. To, something they just made up. And honestly, eat, yeah. Honestly, and I'm not gonna take away from my pussy now. It is macaroni. It is. Period. So that that me, me your butt lasagna. Jesus. <laughs> God, lasagna is crazy. I don't know what my butt is because I don't play around. Like I don't. I don't know what my butt give me. Honestly, so. You never done that? I've never done anal. Maybe a thumb, maybe somebody eating it, whatever, but a whole penis, like I oh. barely can take shit, honestly. Like I know I'm not gonna do that. I ain't gonna cap. I tried it. I had a nigga, he was so small. I thought Jesus. this is my gateway. I'm about to open up the floodgates, but it just I just was too scared. I always was scared. Like, I don't know because I don't do it, but they say you gotta relax. That's what breathe. they say. I've done it. Yeah, we it ain't too much. We don't think you did. What you what you think about it? <sighs> I'm flabbergasted. No, you were um, you were uh, f- 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 provocative. <laughs> what you? How would you rate anal? Um, it's really situational for me, mm-hmm. or circumstantial, I guess. Um, it's based on 
how I'm feeling uh, at that time. If you get me to that point and I decide I want it, um, then I'll do it. But if you ask me, I'm probably gonna be like, hell no, we're not doing it. So it's like, is it like on a scale of one to 10, as far as pleasurable, how would you rate it? Um, about a three. So it ain't nothing that you're going to go in the bedroom like. I'm Saying, oh, you about to fuck me in my ass now. Nah, that is not going to be the start of that. I don't know. I've I've never done it. You know what I'm saying? So I can't tell you myself. Um, With that being said, I think we have some technical difficulties. Hold up. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Showed it right on time. Right on time. I don't even know where we was at. We can't hear you, Jody. There you go. Now. There we go. You 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 owe us three minutes. Okay. So so um I, we we know we only had you for an hour, so we don't want to you know what I mean go too far over. So can you can spend those three minutes um basically you know plugging in your podcast where they can find you at um your Patreon and all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. So uh provocative um the podcast of course drops every Wednesday on all streaming platforms. Uh, that's P R H O E V O C A T I V E. Um, uh, what else? Uh, definitely can subscribe to my Patreon. I got a bunch of dope content that's about to drop on Patreon. Um, I'm also a cast member of the new reality TV show on own network called The Never Ever Mets that is dropping on April 19th. So you guys can see me on TV on Ooh. April 19th. Um, that's gonna be interesting. Um, right. what else? Um, uh, give me your social. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Not every on every so like no, nah, I definitely don't want to plug all my socials, but definitely follow me on Instagram. <laughs> that's where I frequent. Um, my Instagram is J O D Y P R H O E. So Jody P R Ho. Um, <laughs> I I try to see what else. Um. If you guys are in the Chicago area and gonna be at Exotica, y'all can catch me there. Um, and yeah, that's Exotica. It. Exotica, it is the biggest swinger porn, club. It's the biggest porn and adult entertainment conference in the nation. So, you uh, to do porn? yeah, huh? You about to do porn? No, I'm not about to do porn, but I like you know kicking it with the porn stars for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, nice, nice. Um, Mina, where can cool. find you at? Um, y'all can find me on Facebook at Mina Hawkins or on the podcast page Pitched and Unscripted. Shay, um, so y'all can find me on Facebook Shay Janae. Um, on Instagram is underscore you love Shay Janae, and then of course I am on the Kane is Able podcast every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, all streaming platforms, by the way. And of course, you know you can find us as a group at the Cane is Able podcast. Um, if you have any topics you want us to discuss, uh, any questions you have for us, or any questions you may even have for Jody, uh, email us at caneisablepod at gmail.com. You can find me at Hennessy Black on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm sorry, X underscore Hennessy Black with two Cs. Uh, Snapchat, Hen on the Rocks. And again, Jody, want to thank you for taking your time out this Saturday yes. to join us, uh, educate us, uh, let me know that I did not have my consent, non-consent fantasy that I thought I had, but now I got to try again. Um, so <laughs> I, can't, I can't say I did. I never had a threesome because right. y'all, I've had one. <laughs> With your bestie. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You just have, you want to have a different type of threesome next go round. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I encourage you to, uh, it should be all friends. I, you know, you know I'd, I'd rather it be all girls, but have it, have it fall. As long as it ain't three men, because it ain't going out like that. <laughs> mm. No, I'm saying like you should probably find a female friend that is like with that, and then yeah. you guys can go from there. Okay, well, Jody, we, if you can, we got to bring you back. We know you're a busy person, but you know, um, if you ever right. find time for us, definitely come back, uh, educate some of our followers. Um, yeah, for sure. Know. Yeah, you know, because, you know, we, we just think we fucking. We ain't know there's no rules and <laughs> guidelines behind it. We just think we out here fucking. Either you're good at it or you're bad at it. See, that's the problem, because it's more than just being good and bad. It's right. <laughs> well, that's what we're going we gonna to bring you on for, to keep teaching us. You know what I mean? So until next right. time, Jody, you enjoy the rest of your day, your weekend. Um, Don't get your back blown out. I think you should. I really it's think. I think I should, too. Matter of yeah. fact, now, for, now you call yeah. this man. 
Hey, hey, and I'm about hey. to go somewhere. Shit. That, hey, that Easter drop that egg. <laughs> I want my egg cracked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. The love you. See you later. All right, see y'all. Hey.